Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Um, that means may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon you all. Um, earlier, I was informed that among those who registered for today's event, about 65% are future doctors who are women. Right? And across schools, medical schools, law schools, we've seen the increase um, in, re in enrollment rates of women and girls. And that is truly remarkable, considering that decades ago, it was not always the case. Take, for example, the story of Harija. Harija is a Tausug Muslim Filipina who was born at a time when it was okay, when it was normal to deprive female children of their right to education. Her family refused or did not allow her to go to school, not because they could not afford the tuition cost, but because she was a woman. Because they believed that going to school and providing for the family, these are the roles for men alone. And seeing you all here today is a manifestation that we have come a long way in that regard. As what I've said, more women today are enrolled and more women today are studying uh, medic uh, medicine or law school uh, in law schools but it's not it's not just your gender that's the barrier okay despite the elimination of that barrier we still have other hindrances to access to education some of you here might be familiar with the story of Cristel Tejada Cristel Tejada was a beautiful and young intelligent woman she was a student of the University of the Philippines. She was a student until she was barred from entering the university because her family could not afford her tuition. Okay. Then you have the story of countless children who never had their day in school. Countless children who were so innocent and who were so young. Countless children who had larger-than-life dreams Dreams like our own, whose lives were lost in wars fought in Mindanao. Wars they knew nothing about. Now, why did, I, why did I choose to start my presentation with their stories? It's because their stories are a reminder that our rights, opportunities, and freedoms today are not shared by all of us. Their stories are a reminder of our privilege. Their stories are a reminder that the poor are poor not because they are lazy, but because they don't have the same opportunities that we have. And why am I saying this? Because the simple idea here that I want each of you to get from my, um, from my simple speech is that checking our privilege is our responsibility as a Filipino. And checking, our and, and checking our privilege is not just about becoming aware that what we have or some of the freedoms that we enjoy are freedoms that others don't have or don't enjoy. That's not checking our privilege. Checking our privilege requires a positive action to actually ensure that each of us, regardless of ethnicity, religion, class, or political background enjoys the fullest of freedoms and rights enshrined in our laws. To paraphrase Spider-Man, with great privilege comes great responsibility. And our generation is not new to inspiring change. Our generation is not new to serving our country. Take, for example, the story of 2nd Lieutenant Mershina Silungan, a 26-year-old registered nurse and a combatant officer of the Philippine Marines. Today, she is the only female in her team and she serves at the front lines in the liberation efforts for our Muslim brothers and sisters in Marawi City. Every day, she braves every bullet and she braves every possibility that it could be her last, knowing fully well 
that the cause that she's fighting for is greater than her own. And knowing fully well that we are only a, as good as a nation as our freedom. Then you have the case of doctors um, Perlas and Sinolinding. These are doctors who died while serving as doctors to the barrios. They believe that every Filipino deserves access to health care. That health care is a human right. That it is a universal human right. And you know why, as future doctors, you are so lucky? For example, for us lawyers, it depends on our moral compass if we, do, if we choose to do good or sometimes we choose to defend, for example, the not-so-good people. But for you medical doctors, at the core of your profession is the compassion and the opportunity to help change lives, to save lives. At the core of your profession is the compassion to actually make sure that the future generations or the generations to come will have an even better tomorrow. Then you have the story of thousands of those of us who chose to serve as nurses, public school teachers, police officers, and civil servants. You know, as a government employee from um, the ARMM, I have had the opportunity to meet some of the most honest and some of the most competent people I know. People who get up early in the morning, work the long hours, and go home to their families tired from their labor, but with the highest hopes that by serving their country, they create a better opportunity and a better future for the generations to come, for their children and for our children's children. Years from now, you will be choosing what kind of doctors you would like to be. And I can only hope that in doing so, you are fully aware of your privilege and what your privilege entails, and what your privilege entails as your responsibility to the Filipino people. And if ever you get lost, take inspiration or draw inspiration from our history as a people. Our history is a history of creating possibilities for the next generations. It was because of those who came before us that women and girls are no longer discriminated. It is because of those who came before us that some, um, there are now policies, existing laws and bills drafted to make sure that there is access to education. And it is now our turn, our generation's turn, okay, to check our privilege and to build new possibilities. Earlier, I mentioned about Harija. Right? Harija, a Tausug Muslim woman who was deprived of her right to education. And it's because, it's because of the past generations that today she gets to see and witness her grandson speak before you all about her life story. Speak before you all about the responsibility, our responsibility to the next generation. So when you get home, this is what I want you to do. Reflect on your privilege and think what you can do to contribute to build a better future to our children. Thank you all so much.